Welcome to the Culture of Healthcare, Sociotechnical Aspects, Clinicians and Technology. This is Lecture B. The component, the culture of healthcare, addresses job expectations in healthcare settings, including how care is organized within a practice setting, privacy laws, and professional and ethical issues encountered in the workplace. The objectives for sociotechnical aspects, clinicians and technology, are to describe the concepts of medical error and patient safety, discuss error as an individual problem and as a system problem, compare and contrast the interaction and interdependence of social and technical resistance to change, discuss the challenges inherent with adapting work processes to new technology, discuss the downside of adapting technology to work practices and why this is not desirable, discuss the impact of changing socio-technical processes on quality, efficiency, and safety. This lecture discusses patient safety. Because of the importance of patient safety, measures are being taken nationwide in order to improve patient safety in healthcare facilities in the United States. The National Patient Safety Goals, or NPSGs, promoted by the Joint Commission, are a set of regulations that address specific safety issues in the hope of improving care on a national level. For example, these regulations include measures to reduce infections by microorganisms that are resistant to multiple antibiotics. The NPSGs address the problem of bloodstream infections related to the use of indwelling catheters, or CRBSIs, and also specifically focus on reducing surgical site infections, or SSIs. By addressing potentially avoidable safety issues, the NPSGs aim to create a safer patient environment during the delivery of health care. Another aspect of patient safety is the implementation of a do not use list. In 2001, the Joint Commission issued a warning on the subject of medical abbreviations. Some medical abbreviations were confusing, and if used improperly, they could cause harm to patients. It became obvious that some abbreviations could no longer be used. In 2002, the Joint Commission approved a national patient safety goal requiring accredited organizations to develop and implement a list of abbreviations that they would not use. In 2004, the Joint Commission created its own Do Not Use list of abbreviations as part of the requirements, and in 2010, the National Patient Safety Goal was integrated into the Joint Commission Information Management Standards. By establishing a set of standards by consensus, the Joint Commission hopes to reduce the incidence of adverse events associated with the improper use of medical abbreviations. This measure has significant implications in the improvement of overall safety when patients are admitted to a hospital or acute care setting. Organizations with Joint Commission accreditation incorporate these various standards and directions from the Joint Commission in their operational processes and procedures, many of which focus on supporting patient safety and error reduction. Hospital-acquired infections can be dangerous and even fatal. Controlling infections in the hospital setting is an important patient safety measure, and many methods have been used to address this issue. One focus has been on improving hand hygiene. Clinicians are encouraged to follow good hand-washing practices, and compliance has improved after the addition of waterless hand rubs as opposed to using soap and water. Another method has been an emphasis on immunizing healthcare professionals to prevent the spread of disease. Using antibiotics appropriately for infected patients reduces the incidence of antibiotic overuse and the emergence of resistant microorganisms. If infectious patients are admitted to the hospital, they must be identified and isolated to control the spread of that infection in the hospital setting. Infection control also involves revising and updating training measures, improving competency assessments, and recommending suitable handwashing procedures. Infection control is one significant component addressed in providers' policies and procedures. Infection control is also achieved by promoting safety with respect to medications or delivery systems. For example, using single-use IV flush vials instead of multi-dose vials reduces the risk of cross-contamination or the introduction of infection into the environment. Although focused on the hospital setting, efforts to control infections also apply to all other types of healthcare providers. There is a small but distinct possibility that patients will be harmed during surgery. One unfortunate cause of patient harm is when surgery is inadvertently performed on the wrong site or even on the wrong patient. In 2003, the Joint Commission approved the Universal Protocol for Preventing Wrong Site, Wrong Procedure, and Wrong Person Surgery. 
Since 2004, this universal protocol has been required for all accredited hospitals, ambulatory care settings, and office-based surgical facilities. Components of the universal protocol include conducting a patient and site verification before the surgery, using a process that is replicable, and clearly marking the procedure site before the surgery begins. Surgical teams also perform a pre-procedure timeout during which they recheck important safety parameters and then proceed only if no issues are identified. The Joint Commission continues to work toward ensuring that the right tools and resources are available to assist providers in maintaining the highest degree of patient safety possible and reducing errors. These components, when combined in a well-defined, repeatable process, can reduce or prevent patient harm during surgery. Patient safety is promoted by a number of organizations, for example, the LeapFrog Group. LeapFrog is a voluntary program that was initiated by large healthcare employers and organizations of healthcare purchasers. LeapFrog initiatives include a number of efforts to reduce medical mistakes, such as the LeapFrog Hospital Survey. The list of LeapFrog members is impressive. Employers include corporations such as Boeing, Chrysler, and FedEx, and organizations of purchasers include various state employers' quality health alliances and state business groups on health. Nonprofit organizations also promote patient safety. One example is the National Quality Forum, or NQF. The NQF sets national priorities and goals for quality performance improvement, endorses national consensus standards for measuring and reporting performance, and promotes the attainment of national goals through education programs. Members of the NQF include consumer organizations, clinicians such as physicians and nurses, hospitals, public and private purchasers, accrediting and certifying bodies, and healthcare research and quality improvement organizations. Consumer organizations, such as Consumer Reports, also help to promote patient safety. Consumer Reports has released comparative data on hospitals, cardiac surgical groups, treatments, and even natural medicines. This organization uses multiple methods to generate its ratings. For example, it uses performance data from the Society of Thoracic Surgeons to rate cardiac surgeons. In another example, it uses patient ratings based on a federal government survey called the Hospital Consumer Assessment of Healthcare Providers and Systems Survey, also known as the HCAPS survey, to rate hospitals. In the HCAPS survey that allows patients to rate hospitals, questions ask about communication with doctors and nurses, whether patients received pain control when needed, and the cleanliness and quietness of rooms. Patients are asked whether they received information about new medications and discharge instructions. They are also asked whether they would recommend the hospital to family and friends and are encouraged to provide an overall rating of their experience. When consumers become involved by providing ratings of hospitals, they assist other patients to make sensible choices and may play a role in promoting patient safety. This concludes Lecture B of Sociotechnical Aspects, Clinicians, and Technology. In summary, patient safety is promoted through enhancements in technology and improvements in how people work. This socio-technical process is assisted by agencies such as the Joint Commission, which has promoted regulations to address safety issues such as surgical site infections and catheter-related bloodstream infections. The Joint Commission has also taken steps to reduce errors associated with inappropriate medical abbreviations. Infection control in the inpatient setting is an important aspect of patient safety, and multiple strategies are applied to achieve this goal. Organizations such as the LeapFrog Group and the National Quality Forum promote patient safety, as do consumer organizations. Patient ratings of hospitals are an important facet in determining quality of care.